Welcome back. And next up is Sebastian from Trend My Micro. Enjoy his talk. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this presentation. Today, I will speak about LoRa pounding particular radio attacks against LoRa One. So I'm with Sebastian, I work for the Trend Micro company, and I've also founded my own company focusing mostly on RF um, attacks and hardware attacks. So mainly I'm doing that. Um, at Trend Micro, we're doing IoT security, and we, have, uh, we also help developers in order to secure their own endpoints. So that's why we have also developed our own SDK. And you can also uh, click on the link after uh, the slides will be available in order to, uh, to have some more information about that. But today, let's focus on the RF attacks first. So you have to know that as an attacker, uh, um, you know, when doing RF attacks, the MAC layer uh, is one of the most interesting part because actually uh, in lower one, it can it allows you, for example, to, uh, it provides actually a lot of classes, uh, also MAC commands, payloads, and encryption. Uh, so this is the most in interesting part. Uh, so mostly, Let's also see the state of the security of LoRaWAN now. So you have to know that here are some relevant publications uh, that were uh, made before this presentation, and they were uh, mostly focused on the uh, encryption side. Uh, so mostly, you 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 could see some you know some known attacks uh, that we we will be able to do on Lower, uh, actually on Lower One, like the e uh, bit flipping, uh, axe spoofing. LoRa class P attacks, etc., uh, including also root key management for exp exposed endpoints, also physical hardware attacks. For example, if you have like an exposed uh, end node uh, that you can find in the wild uh, by you know, for example, dumping the keys, etc. Um, and the existing tools uh, that were presented before uh, were the following. Now, um, for example, uh, here is a tool that um, uh, that was presented uh, also last year at the Defense Network Conference, which was Laugh, uh, which is a lower one auditing the framework, which is like a great tool as to assess lower one setups, but has some few limitations. And because of this limitation, and also uh, we have also found another tool which is called Chipotle, but because of the limitation of the tools uh, that were ever, um, uh, made, uh, that were um, uh, made public, um, we have developed our own tool uh, based on a software definite radio in order to have like more flexibility. And our, we have also developed our tool um, in top of uh, the, this base in order uh, to have like, you know, as much uh, flexibility as possible. Um, so let's talk about hair of attacks now. So using SDR, uh, of course. Before SDR, you have to know that it was like very difficult to get an equipment and very, uh, you know, each equipment was very expensive. But now, even with like uh, a very, uh, very cheap equipment like this one, like the SDR, you are able to uh, to do some signal acquisition. You can then process the signal and then decode it. I mean, demodulate it, decode it, etc. So you can do pretty much everything you want. But if you want also to uh, to do, um, I mean, to do some transmission things, you have also to spend more money on on, uh, on another SDR that will be able to transmit signal over the air. So everything, uh, depending on what you want to do, you can choose um, an SDR that can fit your, um, your expectations. And in, uh, here are the example of targets so we have been focusing on uh, doing our research. Uh, so here are some lower devices like uh, one gateway, one GPS tracker, one do sensor, and one dev kit. But today, uh, we mostly uh, look at this uh, this uh, setup because we don't have like a lot of time. So it will be mainly uh, based on one dev kit, uh, one Intel SDR, and a gateway, which is here. So, but first, uh, before doing um, all the things, we have like some point we have to demodulate the signal. So uh, to to avoid uh, doing our own uh, demodulation um, and also spend a lot of time, there are already some implementation uh, which are the IPP0, BASTI research, but there are also other, I mean, other modules that allows also to decode the LoRa, but here are the most uh, relevant for our, for our purpose. Uh, but the problem is that LoRa uh, also um, have, can have like different frequency, different, different um, spreading factor and bandwidth. So at some point, if you use, uh, I mean, uh, one block for each frequency and spreading factor and bandwidth, uh, you will introduce a lot of latency. So you have to do some optimizations. And to do that, you can, for example, uh, recenter all the frequency to one specific frequency. Then do, uh, you also play with this decimation in order to, 
uh, to feed the, the blocks with the minimum sample rate. And like that, you can, uh, you can you know, work with uh, pretty much all, for example, European uh, frequency, uh, raw one frequency, and like that, you can, you can uh, demodulate what you want in uplink and also in downlink. Um, and here is our tool. So our tool is um, able, for example, to use, uh, to parse, to generate, and also to, uh, to brute force, to decrypt, uh, to, to capture also packets as pickup, and also many features. It is also developed in Python, so it's very flexible, and you can also develop, uh, you know, uh, you, your own feature based on, you know, what you, what you want. Uh, also, uh, to, be, um, to be clear, uh, the, there's already some implementation that is available for free, uh, which is the parsing and generation feature that you can also um, see in the uh, contribution of SCAPI, uh, which is the tool to, uh, to parse and generate uh, some protocol stacks, for example. So actually, uh, you can actually use SCAPI and the contribution uh, layer, which is LoRa V21. So let's do a little demo uh, of our tool. So actually, it looks like follow. Uh, I will show you uh, this, um, this uh, window now. Uh, so now let's go to this window um, and I will show you how to, it would be uh, done. So uh, first also, I uh, will also show you how to uh, use the, the RTLSDR with that. So here's the RTLSDR. We will plug in the RTLSDR first like that. And then uh, let's go back to this window. We will just like run the flow graph and see what happens. We can see here an FFT and also waterfall here. And after that, we have to uh, go uh, to our project. So in our project, we have like uh, something called LoRa FD code here. So we can, for example, use, I will just copy the line. So like that, I can be very fast and just say that I want to output a pickup like that. So let's now just try to decode what will go uh, inside this, um, I mean, after the capture. And then uh, let's go back to this uh, view. So now let's uh, just plug in our dev kit like that and see what happens. So after a certain time, normally you should see a packet normally here. And also you can see, for example, a downlink here and an uplink uh, because I have already programmed a downlink packet uh, in the network server in order to respond to, um, to the first uplink. So you can see, for example, a counter of zero here, uh, and then a counter of one, and you know, everything got, uh, gets um, decoded like that. It's pretty, pretty easy. Now let's go, uh, 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 let's continue. You can also see in the waterfall that uh, we are ac um, actually capturing the signal from different frequency, which is clearly good. So you can also do a max hole like that and see what is happening. Um, go back, let's go to the interactive mode and with the interactive mode, we can, for example, see what is happening. So let's, for example, just uh, retrieve the first packet of LoRa like that, that was capturing the pickup like that. So we can already see the same packet as before. And then we'll use also a function uh, that is associated to the version, version uh, 1.0 and decrypt I mean, um, um, brute force the, um, uh, the key that is associated to the MIC. And we, by, by doing some testing, we can find, you know, uh, um, a very, uh, I mean, a key that is appropriate for that. And then we will use that key to decrypt the packet. And so you can see uh, with decrypt um, FM payload that we get the clear text payload, which is good. So let's go back to the slides now and continue. Uh, so, Uh, we can also inject frames if we want, for example, using a uh, specified dongle and using that, that uh, dongle, we can then reproduce a play, replay attack, for example, uh, in APB mode in order to, for example, if you capture a packet after uh, the counter um, has, been, uh, has, been, you know, um, uh, has been sent to the maximum uh, after a certain time, you can reuse a packet and then try to DOS, for example, an end device. So actually this is one of the vulnerabilities you can, for example, replay uh, with the same scenario. Uh, now let's talk about an important part, which is the fuzzing protocol stack. And uh, 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 it can be interesting because some implementations use open source uh, stacks. So for example, LoRa Magnus stack, uh, there's also basic station for the gateways. Uh, so actually, 
Uh, also, what is interesting is that very few vulnerabilities have been have been uh, have been sent also have been published uh, uh, on that uh, stack. So it can be also interesting to find some other vulnerability. So that's uh, what we also um, um, try to uh, to do. Uh, but first, we had, for example, for example, for funding uh, Laura Mike not stack. Um, as it is uh, source code, we could, for example, use AFL++ in order to automatize uh, some fudging tests and uh, in order to, to get, I mean, to, to get some vulnerability, maybe try to find some bugs and then try to confirm them um, as vulnerability. Uh, but first we had like also to, uh, to remove all the uh, architecture specific code in order to make it work because actually it's, uh, it's using some architecture specific codes at some points, uh, some function that are um, specific to uh, to some architecture like uh, uh, STM32, etc. So um, as we wanted to make it run on X86, uh, we had to, uh, for example, use to retrieve the uh, important uh, function, which is the process ready Rx DOM, which is like uh, the function that, that will be, uh, um, I mean, called once it gets uh, a receive uh, packet. And then we also remove some specific function in order to make it work, uh, but still uh, by uh, by um, uh, not removing the logic uh, as well. And like that, we also, uh, we have developed our own architecture in order to get, for example, from raw upon uh, some uh, generated packet. For example, we can generate packet, or we can also capture packet, and then we can minimize them. We can then, uh, after that, uh, uh, try to instrument some binaries in order to, um, to do some mutations. And then based on the inputs, we can, for example, get some crashes and then uh, classify the crashes, and then try to see if uh, we face some vulnerability or not based on the uh, on the crashes. Here is an example of a Rini Woken uh, um, giving us some crashes, and then when we use the classifier, uh, we get a, a crash report which was like that, which tells us also about the backtrace um, of the crash. So we can also get um, some some idea of the crash if it's exploitable or not. For um, uh, closed um, uh, binaries, it's much more difficult, for example, for the regular packet, for other. Um, we have exactly the same function uh, which is used for parsing, but it's a very small part, and all the logic uh, which is uh, in the upper layer uh, is not available in, the, in um, open source. So at some points, uh, we can, uh, we had like to emulate the Discord, and to do that, we can use uh, Unicorn Engine or Killing, because actually uh, uh, it is closed source. But the problem with uh, Dragon uh, uh, firmware is that it's, it's only available in MIPS MSB architecture, which is broken for killing our Unicorn engine uh, from now. Uh, we can still do some over the air uh, fudging, but still it's not very um, good for, to, to scale. Uh, but there are also some alternatives you're using, for example, debugger to instrument uh, the, uh, the binary. For the exploitation, we can expect that, for example, after tracking your bug, we can have like some linear services. We can also, uh, for example, for successful exploit, we can um, um, leak some keys. We can also do some arbitrary curl execution, backdooring, etc. But it's kind of challenging because at some point, uh, you don't know the version, you don't know how it is compiled, you don't know also the instruction set at the beginning, uh, you don't know, you know, the, the targets, and you can, um, and based also on the architecture. Uh, you can have also some limitations. So, uh, you know, it's a kind of um, challenging. So for the conclusion, uh, as you may see, SGR is um, a nice approach to uh, go very low level. You can, you have like more flexibility and then you can also manage everything in Python. Uh, so, but still there are some lot of, uh, there's a lot of optimization to be done uh, also because we have made some optimization, but we could also use GPU uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to run some blocks, uh, some part of the blocks in order to uh, have like a, a better, uh, I mean, uh, um, um, I mean less latency that well, we have, like for example, using CPU, for example. Uh, hunting for sacro cutter vulnerability is interesting, as you may see, because um, it's like, an, um, I mean, a vector that uh, wasn't exploited before, but, and uh, I mean, is not as exploited as uh, we see. Many uh, cryptographic side was exploited, but uh, we can see that it can have like a great impact uh, depending on the context. And also uh, there are a lot of improvements to, uh, to be made on the emulation. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, it's, you know, uh, that's, uh, it's finished for me, but uh, if you have any question, please ask. Uh, and also I'm freely available on Twitter and LinkedIn. So if you have also any question, I'm also uh, easy to find. 
Thank you very much and see you uh, later. Bye.